All right, so let's get started with uh, part four here. All right, we're going to learn how to configure presentations to print or save. This is the next step in exam 77-422, a PowerPoint 2013 certification. So once you have your presentation created, how do you save it? Well, uh, probably everybody knows how to save a file. You go File, Save, or Control S, or you click the little floppy disk thing up here. Um, for those of you that are too young to know what a floppy disk is, lucky you, lucky you. But old timers like me remember when we had to use floppy disk for things. So that is a floppy disk, that little purple circle that the mouse pointer's on, or the purple shape that the mouse pointer's on. So, but you have a whole lot of options available to you besides just saving it as a PowerPoint file. Uh, first thing I'm going to go over is how to print your PowerPoint slides. It's more than just going to File and Print or Control P or something like that. Uh, if you go to File and Print, you, know, you have a whole bunch of other settings that are available to you. Uh, your default settings will probably look like this once you first open it up. I was in here messing around. There we go. And I can select how many copies I want by using this box here. Uh, you don't have to use these little arrows. I find these little arrows are um, irritating sometimes. You can just go in and type in the number of uh, copies you want to make. I want to make 10 copies of this presentation. You can select your printer. Uh, I don't have many printers set up on this machine. If it's a network printer you need to add, you can click Add Printer. And you can go through your network and find a printer. In corporate environments, that's very, very handy. All right, now, next question is, how do I want to print my presentation? I can print all slides. I can print just the slides that I have selected in my normal view. I can just print the current slide that I'm viewing. I can enter a custom range. We'll get back to that in a second. I might not want to print full page slides. I might want to print, let's say, three slides on a piece of paper. And this is really neat. I, this is one of my favorite uh, ways to print out a PowerPoint presentation for my audience. Because what it does is on the left hand side you have thumbnail pictures of your slides. And over on the right hand side you give them an area where they can take notes about your presentation. I always thought that was that was really neat that you could do that. Uh, things such as nine slides per page. I, I don't have nine slides in this presentation, but I've always found that that was too many slides crammed into one piece of paper. You can't see it. Um, I don't know, maybe a stamp collector would like that or something. Uh, I don't collect stamps, but that would definitely... Um, I would definitely stink to shove nine slides of information on one piece of paper. Nine slides horizontal, eh, that's all right. Still too much on one piece of paper. You can print out a notes page. So you would have your speaker notes here. If I go back to my slide view here, and on my first slide, I go to view, just to review a little bit from last lesson, go to view, notes page, there we go, and I can say, do what most people do when they make a presentation. Welcome here, let me zoom in a little bit on this. You can zoom in or out using this little tool right here. I'll give it a second to catch up. Audience and make stupid joke. Yeah. I misspelled a few things, PowerPoint corrected it for me, that's fine. So we're going to welcome the audience and make a stupid joke. If I go to File, Print, go, and it's still set to Notes page, I can see that my notes are printed below my slide, so I can print out a copy of this for myself at the current, uh, so at the current, uh, presentation so when I'm up at the podium or lectern or whatever I have my notes available to me and I can see what the audience is seeing because typically you really don't want to turn around and look at the screen if you're on stage you want to engage your audience so you know which uh, slide they're looking at and you know what to talk about on that slide 
if I print multiple copies, do I want them to be collated? Meaning, does it print all of set 1, then all of set 2, then all of set 3? Or do I want them to be uncollated? Meaning it's going to print 10 copies of slide 1, 10 copies of slide 2, 10 copies of slide 3. You might not want to do that. If you leave this and you make 100 copies, you might end up sorting a few things. So I tend to leave that collated. Or if you just have an intern you don't like, you can uncollate them and make them, I guess, make him sort them out. Do I want to do portrait orientation or landscape orientation? If I do landscape orientation, it's portrait landscape. I think we went over that in the last lesson. And do I want to print them in black and white, grayscale, or color? If you have a color laser printer, and you know, you're allowed to print in color according to your company policy, whatever. Some companies have policies about that, whatever it is. Okay, or if you're at home and you have a color printer and you want to print out copies, uh, this is a great option. Color really adds something to your presentation. All right. The color laser jet technology has really come down in price a lot to where it's actually affordable for people to get something uh, really neat. All right. If I just want to print a certain selection of slides, I can do a custom range. Okay. And I can say slides one through three. There we go. Or if I want to do one comma two through four. I guess that doesn't make much sense, does it? One, three through four. Okay. Then that would print slides one, slide two, or excuse me, slide one, slide three, and slide four. So you can enter any custom range you want. If you're doing multiple ranges, uh, you put a comma in between them. If you're doing a range, let's say two through ten, you put two dash ten. Not a big deal. You can do a whole bunch of neat stuff with that. Right? Um, also, you could, if I go back to normal view here, I could hold my shift key down. I could select multiple ranges of slides. All right, I know it's selected because it had an orange border around it. Or, let me click off of that. There we go. If I hold the control key down on my keyboard, I can select non-continuous ranges of slides. And then if I go back to File, Print, I could say, here we go, print only the selected slides. There we go. And it would only print those slides that I have selected in my normal view. All right, let's say I want to send my slideshow to somebody. Let's say I'm making some marketing material, right? So what we can do is we can export this and we can say package presentation for CD. This has been around since PowerPoint 2000. All right, I, I don't know if that's really when they started it, but that's the earliest version of Office I can remember. So I'm gonna go with Office, uh, with uh, PowerPoint 2000, okay? You click that, you click package for CD. Go, and we can name this um, test ah. export. And it adds the presentation that you currently are working on. If you want to add a presentation or remove a presentation, you have those two options right there. You also have a button called options that when you click it, it gives you, well, it gives you options. You can include any linked files that you have, embedded true type fonts, meaning if you have a font that is on your computer but it might not be on the other person's computer, you can embed those uh, into your PowerPoint presentation. Password to open, password to modify, so you have a little bit of security there. I'm just going to leave the defaults and click OK. And then you have two options. You can copy it to a CD, which means it immediately takes it and burns it to a CD or DVD. You can also copy to folder. I'm going to copy to folder. And I'm going to leave the option check that says open folder when complete. I'm going to let it put it in the documents folder. I'm going to click OK. Uh, yes, I want to include linked files if I have any, which I don't. But we'll just put it like that. And what it does is it makes a folder for you. It has an auto run file. So when the CD, I can burn these files to a CD now. And then 
And when I put that CD in a CD drive, it will automatically run it if auto runs turned on, which it typically is in 99.9% .9 of the cases. The presentation package gives me all of my uh, images. It even gives me a web page that I can use. Double click on that. Go test export presentation one. And from here I can download the PowerPoint viewer. The PowerPoint viewer is a piece of software where if someone does not have PowerPoint on their computer, they can at least view PowerPoint presentations. If you click that, it's a hyperlink, takes you to Microsoft's website. So you need an internet connection to get to this point, but you can download it. PowerPoint Viewer 2007, that's fine. Uh, and you can download it, install it, and they can open up PowerPoint presentations and view them. They cannot edit, they cannot uh, add to, take away from, change anything about the presentation. They can only look at it. All right, and this is really a neat option, uh, especially if you have something like a um, a kiosk somewhere in your office, and you don't want to spend a, a, a Microsoft Office license to to put your PowerPoint presentation on that kiosk. That's just going to be sitting up front. Package to CD, burn it to a CD, plop it in the drive, start it up, and there you go. All right. Let me close out of this window here. Yeah, let me close out of this. All right, save presentations as web pages. This has gotten a little tricky uh, ever since 2010, PowerPoint 2010. Uh, they took out the ability to save it as an HTML file. Let me show you what we used to do in older versions of PowerPoint. We go to File, Save As, and then you could click Browse to save it somewhere else. You drop down the Save As type, and it used to be right here. HTML files used to be right here, but it's not here anymore. They removed that in, in Office 2010. They removed that ability. So what we can do, however, is w if you have a OneDrive account, which as I said, and I believe lesson one, I would get a OneDrive account. Awesome online storage. You can add a place in your OneDrive account, and then you can share your presentation from that OneDrive account to, uh, to other people. Okay, saving PowerPoint presentations as HTML was kind of a way to get it to somebody that didn't have PowerPoint. Maybe you could email it to them or something, but it just became a pain because people would actually post it to a web server and be like, hey, here's my web page. It was never meant for web design. I, I, I really think that's why they took it out. Okay, so maybe the person I'm sending this to, maybe I want to send it to somebody. Maybe I'm collaborating with someone outside of my office, maybe another company, partner company, uh, whoever. Uh, maybe I have a PowerPoint uh, expert that I'm dealing with. Uh, so maybe he doesn't have PowerPoint 2013. Maybe he has PowerPoint uh, 2003 for whatever reason. Let's just toss a version of PowerPoint out there. Well, Microsoft adds new things to each version of Office. And if someone has an older version of Office, then that what I do in my PowerPoint presentation might not be compatible with their version of PowerPoint. They would be able to view the PowerPoint presentation, but if I add something that is not compatible with their version of PowerPoint, they might not be able to edit that portion of the presentation. Uh, it might cause problems for them, uh, that type of thing. So what I can do is, if I want to maintain backward compatibility with older versions of PowerPoint, I'm going to click Browse again, and I'm going to go here, and I can say, here we go, PowerPoint 97 through 2003 show. Okay, I don't know why anybody would be using PowerPoint 97, but I guess it could happen. Uh, maybe it's a, you know, oh, excuse me, presentation is what I want, not show. But uh, anyway, it still says 97 through 2003. Uh, again, why would anybody be using PowerPoint 97? You know, some third world countries, they just don't have the software. So we click that, we click save, there we go. And what I did is in my presentation, I used well, a piece of what is called smart art, which we're going to get to in a, in a future lesson. But I added that because I wanted you to see this error message. The following features in this presentation are not supported by earlier versions of PowerPoint. 
These features may be lost or degraded when you save this presentation in an earlier file format. Click Continue to save the presentation anyway. To retain all of your features, click Cancel and Save in one of the new file formats. Uh, smart art graphic and any text in it cannot be edited when using versions of Microsoft Office earlier than Office 2007. So if the guy's using 2003, he won't be able to edit the text in the smart art object. It tells me which slide this is on too. That's really kind of neat. And I got a little help but, uh, link there if I need it. If I click continue, there we go. It saves it for me. All right, it also puts it in compatibility mode, as you see up there. So being able to print or save your PowerPoint presentations, it seems kind of like a dull subject, but it's something that you really have to know and you really have to grasp. A lot of people are like, oh, print or save, I know how to do that. You click save or you click print. A little bit more to it than that. You have a whole host of features uh, available to you when you print or save your PowerPoint presentations. Thank you so much for watching my video. I look forward to doing uh, part five, uh, which will be coming out in a little bit. Uh, if you like my videos, uh, leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel. All right, thank you very much for your time.